Jesus. His spirit is here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. That's all we can say. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, oh God. Lord, we just commit this, this time in your presence, oh God. We ask, oh God, that you will move mightily, Lord Jesus. We are only vessels unto your honor, oh God. I am just here to be used by you. I have nothing to say unless you tell me, Lord Jesus. I am nothing without you, God. So, Lord, I pray, oh God, that you will use me, oh God, to speak to your people, to help your people, to transform lives, Lord Jesus. Minds need to be renewed this morning, God. Hearts need to be touched, Lord. So I pray, oh God, that you would touch each and every one of us, oh God, in our areas of need, Lord Jesus. You know where we're hurting. You know where we're broken. You know what we need, oh God. So Lord, we give you full permission, oh God. May your spirit come down this morning mightily, Lord Jesus. Speak, oh God. We are listening. In Jesus' name, amen. I just want to welcome us all here this morning. Um, thank you all for joining us at the King's Palace. I want to welcome everyone who is watching online as well. I want to thank Pastor for this amazing opportunity to speak to you all today. Um, the title of my message today is True Love. True Love. And our text is from 1 Corinthians 13, verses 1 to 8. It says, If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels, but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all the knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but I did not love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I have to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could not boast about it. But if I did not love others, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous, it is not boastful, it is not proud, it is not rude. It does not demand its own way, it is not irritable, and it keeps no record of being wronged. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, it never loses faith, it is always hopeful, and it endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown tongues and special language will become useless but love will last forever. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his word in Jesus' name. So my first thing that we're gonna be talking about today is what is true love? What is true love? Um, and our text that we're gonna be looking at is Romans 5, verse eight. Romans 5, verse eight. And it says, but God demonstrates his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This means that even when we were mocking God, even when we turned our back on him, even when we were not living for him, doing things that pleased our flesh, Christ still died on that cross for us. We don't deserve his love, but yet he still died for us. His love is not something that is conditional. It's not based on how much we love God that he loves us back. His love is full and complete. Regardless of what we do, God still comes back and says, I love you. My mercy is there for you. My grace is enough for you. I don't want any of us to be here and think that God does not love you. He loves you. He cares for you. He may discipline you. He may get, make you go through some hard situations, some storms in life so that you can grow from it. But that does not cancel out his love for you. That is true love. It is not conditional. There's no basis that you have to do in order for God to love you. He loves you. So live and walk in that love. Stop looking for it in other things and people and social media and in our desires, our fleshly desires. Look for it in God. That is the only place that it is complete. That is the only place that it is pure. People can tell you they love you, but then they turn their backs on you when you're your low points in life. But God, in your lowest of points, that's when he lifts you up. That's when he gets closer to you. That's when he whispers in your ear, daughter, son, I am here. Stop looking to other people to fill you up, to complete you. God is enough. And until you accept his love, 
nothing else will compare to it. Nothing else will fulfill that desire in your heart. So begin to accept his love, walk in it and say, God, thank you so much. So many times we forget how much he loves us and we complain, oh, this is going wrong. God, you didn't do this in my life. You didn't do that in my life. And God's like, my love should be enough. That if I never gave you anything else again in this life, you should still wake up in the morning and say, God, thank you for your love. Because that sacrifice, nobody else could do it for me. Only you could have done it. And Lord, I thank you. That is the place that God wants us to get to. To understand that his love is true. It is pure. There is no fakeness in it. My next thing is that true love is not a performance. Our text is from Matthew 6 verses 1 to 4. It says, watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose the reward from your Father in heaven. When you give to someone in need, don't do it as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogues and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth, they have received all the reward they will ever get. But when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private and know that your father who sees everything will reward you. This shows that God's love is not a performance. He's not doing it so that, oh, I can turn around and see, wow, look at how much God has blessed me. God loves me so much. Look at this, look at that. God's love is so that we can bring back glory to his name. He's not blessing you. He's not doing these wonderful things in your life so that you can go around and make fun of other people or bring people down or show people, um, look, I'm so great. I'm so wonderful. I'm so this. God's love is not to be used as a transaction. It's to be used to bring glory back to his name. God is not a light switch. He doesn't turn on and off when we tell him to. His love doesn't come off and on when we tell it to. It's like the sun. It comes up in the morning regardless of whether you tell the sun to come up. God's love remains. Whether you wake up, when you wake up every morning, his love wakes up with you. So regardless of whether you are out here showing forth to everybody, look how much God loves me. Look how much God loves me. God still loves you. He's not wanting you to do it so that people will praise you. He wants you to do it so that people will praise him. They can see that his love is in you and they want to understand more. What makes you act this way? What makes you want to give so much? What makes you want to act this way and say these things and do these things? Even when I'm disrespecting you, yet you still love me. What is, who, what is in you that is causing you to act that way? Then you can now say, look, it is God. It's not me. There's nothing in me that could cause me to love you this much. Even the more you betray me, the more that I love you is because my same father, he did it to me. The more I turn my back on him, he keep chasing after me. That's why I can also love you the same way. It's not a performance. It's not based on how people react that you show God's love. Regardless of what they say, regardless of how they treat you, you continue to love. I don't care what they said about you. I don't care what you have heard. If God is still loves you with all the things you have done against him, with all the things that you have said against him, with all the things that you have said against his people, with all the things that you have done against his people, then you can love everything everybody because his spirit lives in you and it gives you the ability and the grace to love that is true love loving regardless of how people act whether they praise you or don't praise you still show God's love still show God's love I know it is difficult sometimes because people can hurt you but we hurt God every single day but yet he still loves us so we can do it ourselves. My third point is don't speak about love, show how to love others. Ephesians 5 verses 1 to 2, Ephesians 5 verses 1 to 2, it says, imitate God therefore in everything you do because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice to or us, a pleasing aroma to us, to God. So that shows in the end there a pleasing aroma to God. So when we hate others, when we pretend and show fake love and try to replace God's love with all these distractions in life, we're just sending out bitterness. We're just sending out a, a, a smelly scent to God. He doesn't like that. He wants us to love in a pure, in a true way. 
And the only way that we can love is when we spend time with the Father. When we are filled with his love, we can then love other people. You cannot expect to pour out what is not in you. You cannot expect to love others when you don't even spend time with God himself, who is the definition of love. So if you want to know how to love others, first spend time in God's presence. Spend time with the source. And then you will have the grace, the strength to love people that you never thought you would be able to love. Our next text is from Colossians 3, verses 12 to 14. It says, since God chose you to be holy people he loves, you must clothe yourself with tenderhearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults. Forgive anyone who offends you. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourself with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. Clothing. Every day you wake up in the morning and you put on your clothes. It's the same way you got to put on kindness, mercy, humility, gentleness, all of those things on a daily basis. You will not go out of your house naked the same way you should not go out of your house without mercy on you, without kindness on you, without humility on you, without gentleness on you, without God's patience on you. And the only way that you can put those things on is spending time with the Father. It's not learning from, from social media. It's not getting a boyfriend or a girlfriend. It's spending time with your father who sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for your sins. When you didn't deserve it, you did nothing to earn it. So you can't spend a few minutes in the morning, a few minutes in the evening, a few minutes throughout your day to thank this God. And you expect to know how to love others. You expect to know how to be kind, to be gentle, to be humble. It's not going to happen. Spend time with the source and you'll see that he will make it easy for you to love people and love others in a true and a pure way. And lastly, we're just going to talk about why we love. Because Christ died for us. So how can I experience this love? Maybe you haven't even given your life to Christ. Maybe you don't even understand or have experienced or, or been to understand his love for you. And God is saying today, I'm ready, daughter, son. I'm ready to, 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 to take you in, to clothe you with my love, to teach you how to love others. Maybe you have so much bitterness in your heart and you're struggling and you're saying, God, I don't know how I can ever get out of this. How can I ever get out of this bitterness? This person has hurt me so badly. How can I ever love them? And God's saying the first step is to give your life to Christ. Submit to me. Accept my love. And then my love will pour out for you to give to others. You know, in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. It starts by believing in him. It starts by accepting his love. So I want us all to get up right now. I want you to bow your heads bow your heads if you're here this morning and if you've not experienced God's love by accepting it and submitting yourself to him I want to give you this amazing opportunity he's here right now he's saying daughter son no more do you have to run away no more do you have to look for a replacement a substitution to my love my love is here right now and I'm ready to give it to you all I'm asking is that you would raise your hand right now Raise your hand and tell the Lord, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you showed your true love by sending your son to die on the sins, on, die on the cross for my sins. And you rose again from the dead. And I turn away from my sins and I invite you to teach me how to love, to teach me how to live for you, to teach me how to live according to your will, Lord. I'm ready to submit to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, everyone else, I want us to first start by thanking the Lord. Thank him for showing us his true love by sending his son to die on the cross for our sins. But if he had not done that sacrifice, we wouldn't even be here teaching about love because we wouldn't even have an example of what true love is. So just begin to thank the Lord. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Thank you for being the ultimate example. Thank you for being the sacrifice so that I can now be able to imitate you and show love to everyone around me. Even people who mock me, people who disrespect me, people who turn me down, people who who, who 
say horrible things to me. Lord, you have shown that love is possible because you are love and you did it so selflessly so I can also love others around me. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being that example. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for loving me even when I didn't deserve it, even when I was running away from you, even when I was turning my back to you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for your love. Thank you for your love, for being so pure for not being transactional, for not being a performance. You don't love me because of who I am. You don't love me because of what I do or what I say or, or my class or anything. It's nothing about me. It's just your character. So Lord, I thank you for you are the definition of love. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Next, we're going to pray and ask the Lord to have mercy on us in any way that we have not genuinely loved others. We've all fallen short on this. There's many times when we have faked it or we have pretended or we have done it so that people will praise us or we, we've said, I love you, but in our hearts, we were holding bitterness. Let's just ask the Lord, Lord, have mercy on me in any way that I have not imitated you and, and showing true love to those around me, in any way that I've held harbored unforgiveness in my heart, in any way that I've harbored pain in my heart and I've not shown genuine love to others, in any way I've allowed pride to get in the way and I did things just so that people would acknowledge me or praise me for what I'm doing. Lord, have mercy, have mercy on me, have mercy on me for not showing genuine love to others around me as you have called each and every one of us to do. Lord, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me, oh God, for not genuinely loving people. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on my bitterness. Forgive me, Lord Jesus. If there's any bitterness still left in me, Lord, in your mercy, remove it this morning. Remove it from my life. Remove it from my mind. Ask the Lord for mercy. Ask him to forgive you. We've all fallen short on this in one way or another. So just ask the Lord for mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. In Jesus' name, amen. And then thirdly, we're going to just ask that the Lord will help us to walk in his love. It's not easy. It's a daily thing. Like I said, we have to constantly clothe ourselves every morning. Clothe yourselves with that love. Clothe yourself with that gentleness. Clothe yourself with that patience. Clothe yourself with that long suffering. There will be people that will look for areas to poke at you. Ooh, what was your weakness? But ask the Lord, Lord, regardless of what is going on, let it be like an armor around me. That no matter how many arrows they shoot at me, I will only be able to speak in love. I will only be able to act back in love. Lord, Help me to genuinely love people. Help me, Lord Jesus. Help me to walk in your love. Help me to seek you, oh God, on a daily basis, on an hourly basis, day by day, minute by minute. I need your love because I cannot show it if I don't have it in me. So Lord, help me. Help me. Fill me up with your love and help me to now pour it out onto others in a genuine way. Not just so that people will praise me and acknowledge that I'm loving the others. No, Lord, I want it to come from my heart. I want it to come truly from me. I want them to see you. I want it to be, look so impossible that all I can point back is, no, it's not me, it's God. Because there's no way that I could love you the way that I'm loving you if it wasn't for God. Lord, when they see my love for others, Lord, may they go back and thank you. May they go back and see you. May they go back and glorify you. I don't want them to see me. Ask the Lord, Lord, help me to walk in that kind of love. That genuine love. That, the love that is not hypocritical. The love that is not transactional. The love that is not a performance. Lord, help me. Help me to truly love others. Help me, Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, we just thank you, oh God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for teaching us the principles of true love. We thank you for your ultimate sacrifice on the cross so that we can even know what love is. We thank you, oh God, for you have taught us to not have a performance of love, but to genuinely love others. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you will have mercy on us in any way that we have not been truthful. We have not been loving to others in a genuine way from the bottom of our hearts. Lord, have mercy on us. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. 
And Lord, we ask to God that you will help us to genuinely go out and love people. If there's anybody that we're harboring unforgiveness, pain against, Lord, today that, that is coming off of us. And we're clothing ourselves back with your love. We're clothing ourselves back with your gentleness, your patience, your kindness, Lord Jesus. And Lord, help us to continuously on a daily basis walk in that love and be that love. So that when people see us, they see you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.